anti deflection law the graphics i brought for you you know absolutely invaluable you will see not now let me talk about it so you know basically there are two aspects here legislators people's representatives after getting elected they are changing their loyalty and that poses challenges on two fronts it can create it may create instability it may create instability yes and also it takes i voted for you because you belong to xyz party and for some reason you joined a, you giving support to how will i feel you know i voted for you because you are an independent and you started supporting how will i feel so representative ethics is one concern for political stability is another political morality this is so you know lot of governments fell in the late 60s the culture used to be called aya ram gaya ram you know aya ram gaya ram a culture people defecting one party to another this and that so when rajiv gandhi came to power in 85 84 80, 84 85 after the death of the mother you know he had 400 that's 400 didn't come for him because the lady got assassinated the whole of india was weeping and then they voted and they got 400 that is the power of the lady the charisma and solid lady so 400 something he got he i'm just taking you behind the curtain 2 3 minutes so he was scared that they will go away because every other politician is stronger than him they'll win them away so he made the law that is i am telling you because you are young people you are not swayed by all these ethics and all that you want to see the material logic ah oh, rajiv gandhi and morality there must be something else to it tell us that that is this now let's get the paper knowledge so there must be some defector there must be some who are not defectors there must be a mechanism where by defectors are disqualified yeah so you have to control defections who is a defector a defector is one you know who is a defector a member of a polit a member of the legislature belonging to a political party voluntarily gives up the membership got it voluntarily if you expel me i didn't give up the membership so i'm not a defector if you expel me and what is this voluntarily okay i belong to x party you guys belong to y party i have not given up my membership of the party but uh, you know if you are having your uh, meeting and i'm coming there so what is this voluntarily giving up of membership we'll come to that so a member of a member of the it applies only to legislators it applies only to the legislators so a legislator who gives up voluntarily the membership of the party on whose ticket he got elected is a defector so what happens he is a defector who else is a defector an independent member who joins a political party defector a nominated member only rajya sabha has nominated member lok sabha doesn't have a nominated member of rajya sabha or those state bodies also a nominated member legislator if he joins a political party 6 months after the nomination so what are you you are a great civil servant we would like to nominate you when did we nominate you first of november 23 and uh, you can join a political party till the 30th of april next year 6 months 
because you don't know anything, you are outside politics, if you want to join, you join. After six months, if you join, you are a defector. Yeah? Independent, nominated, party member. These are the defectors. I will come back to. You are the speaker. You want to quit the party and rejoin after you cease to be the speaker? Go ahead. She is the deputy speaker. She wants to quit the party and rejoin after she ceases to be the deputy speaker. Go ahead. She is the deputy chairperson. Because the chairperson is not a member. He is a vice president. He is not a member of Raj Sabha. He doesn't apply to... He is outside the picture. Speaker. Deputy speaker. Deputy chairperson. You are all members of the legislature. Lok Sabha, Raj Sabha. You want to quit the party and rejoin? No problem. When you quit, it's not attracting the provisions of anti-defection law. So, these are uh, exempt. Merger, I will come to a little later. Now, there is another case also. You are, you know there is parliament. There is parliament. In the parliament, you belong to X party. You belong to X party. And that party has told you, there is a biodiversity bill coming up, vote against it. You vote for it. I am the chief whip of the party in the house. I tell the speaker, Madam, he belongs to my party. I gave her the order to all my members to vote against it. She voted for it. So she went against the orders of the chief whip. She is liable to be called a defector. Please investigate and disqualify her. Yeah? So if you go against the orders of the chief whip in the way you behave in the house of which you are a member, then the chief whip can bring it to the notice of the speaker or chairperson, whatever the case may be, and then request that you be tried for. It's a they act as a tribunal, quasi judicial body, judicial. Uh, then also you are potentially a defector. He'll investigate and go against orders of the chief whip, defector. Independent, nominated, voluntarily giving up membership, you know all that. Now, so, who is not a defector? I told you speaker, deputy speaker and deputy chairperson, quit and come back, you are not a defector. You know, you people are waiting to hear me talk about merger, right? Merger. There is no split, please. There is no split. There used to be a split. You know what was the moral hazard of the split? Split means there is a political party. There used to be. Now it's not there. The party has 30 members in Lok Sabha. 10 of them could split. And they won't be defectors. The other 20 also won't be defectors. You know how it used to transpire? What used to happen? You wanted to go away. She wanted to go. She wanted to go. Three of you wanted to go. Three of you went it will you'll be defectors. You will carry another seven. All ten of you will go so that you are not defectors. So anti-defection law was actually pro-defection if you allow the split because it's the one legislator leaving, group was leaving because in that case they'll get the immunity. That is why split got cancelled in the 91st Amendment Act, you will see it. But then there is a merger, you follow me carefully about the merger. There's huge debate about it. It's not come in the exam so far because it's a bit tough for, the examiner thinks it's a bit tough. But now that the CJI and the Maharashtra speaker, it's come back into news. See, it's like this. You are a political party. You are a political party. This is two-third. This is one-third. Now, you are a political party, remember. You know you are a political party. That is Gandhi Bhavan. I am not talking about Lok Sabha, Raj Sabha. 
I am talking about political party. That political party through some GBM whatever, they will decide, you know office bearers are 100, two thirds, they will decide by two thirds majority. Whatever, how you count the majority, uh, that can be worked out. The political party, the original political party, original political party, two thirds of them, oh, party, I'm not talking about legislators. The original political party, by a two thirds majority, decides that they will merge with another party. Two thirds decides that they will merge with another party. Together, it's a new party. Yeah? You understand? You are the original party. Three of you. Two thirds of you decide to merge with this party. Yeah? Merge! Your name is A. This party is B. Together you become AB. A doesn't exist anymore. Yes? A B may exist. You may merge with B. B only may exist. Or you may create AB. But you don't exist anymore. Two thirds of you decided. So she will say, I'm the one third, what about me? Law says, you're not a defector, nor are these two defectors, none of you is a defector, if it happens that way. Yeah? Now, so you've decided, but then your party has three members in uh, Lok Sabha from Telangana. Yeah? Your party has three members in Lok Sabha from Telangana. So you've decided you merged with that party. But those three members of parliament from Telangana, they have to again, two of them have to decide to merge. If they don't, all three of them are intact. Two do, two are not defectors, one is not a defector. Got it? So, original political party by a two-third majority has to take a decision that they are merging with another political party, in which case the party has merged, the party doesn't exist anymore. The party does not exist, but none of you is a defector. Neither the one-third, nor the two-third is a defector. All are fine. But for, you know, then what will happen to the legislators? Each federal level, state level, in each legislature, you got six in Odisha. Four have to decide that we are merging. Otherwise, all of them, that party is there in that house. You understand this? Yeah? So, the original party, having decided to merge, does not impact the fate of the legislators unless those legislators in each legislature by the same majority, two-thirds or something, merger, then the same logic. Now, you ask me the most difficult here. Where? Outside the legislature. But this has to be backed up by the in each legislature. If they are not aligned, so the Punjab, Punjab, you got uh, 15 people, Punjab, 10 people say merger. Then Punjab legislature won't have this party. Yeah? Otherwise, the Punjab legislature will have this party after the house gets dissolved five years, then there is no party anymore. But that is Punjab. Haryana, they have not decided, okay, let's not go by it because we are too important. So Haryana, the party exists, legislators. Punjabi doesn't exist. Rajasthan, it exists. So the original party having taken the decision by two-thirds majority, whether the, part, the party doesn't exist anymore, whether it exists in the, in the form of legislators or not, has to be dis determined in each legislature by the same majority. Otherwise, that party exists. So, if the, uh, the legislator decides that the party exists, it will exist till their tenure is ended. 
Ah, okay. So now let's go to Maharashtra, the international headquarters of defection. That distinction used to be with Karnataka. It moved on to Telangana. Now Maharashtra oof, is the global epicenter. You know this party Shiv Sena. It had X members. This anti-defection law did not envisage at all. Think of, you know, look at this case. This is a Shiv Sena. Shiv Sena. Legislators, I'm talking of legislators, not the wider party. I'm not, I'm talking of legislators. Shiv Sena, let us say, you know, I don't want to go by the exact number. I'll give you an example. 50 people are there, MLS. 50, let's round it up to 50. 40 people, you are 50. You know, 40 of you, you know what you said? You know, 40 of you, you know what you said? We are the original Shiv Sena. Forgetting the fact that that person is the son of the one who set up the party, the promoter. 40 of you said we are the original Shiv Sena. Law says, the if the party, there is this party, oh, you are the original Shiv Sena. You are 40. What about the other 10? They are not. So what are you saying? What are you saying? The party of 50 has to remain as a party of 50 or two-thirds have decided to merge with another party. Either all of you are together or two-thirds have decided we are, the party doesn't exist. Yeah? That has to come from outside. It has to come from here. The process begins here, outside, in that uh, whatever building, yeah? Okay, you started the process in legislature, Bombay High Court said it can start in the legislature because, see, please understand, it's easy to settle a corporate case. The lands was a... This... The judges are there in the court till 5 in the evening. You know, somebody was talking on 4, it seems, in front of the CGI. Ah, you know how they talk. And some, uh, you know, all sorts of nonsense. He grabbed the phone. After this, you go home. Then you have to think. You don't know where to start, how to navigate. A thousand uh, lawyers also can't enlighten you. Yeah? Because you finished. Today I put a small graphic, our Honorable CJI said, the American Supreme Court handles 80 cases in a year. Indian Supreme Court handles 80,000 cases in a year. Is it possible human? You tell me. And each one is 64, 65. You can do it at your age because it's once in a lifetime. Once you become IAS, you won't do it. Yeah, you are mustering all your energy to sort of crack. 63, 62, anti-defection law, God knows what's going on. Yeah? So now the Bombay High Court washed its hands off, said, okay, even the legislators, two-thirds of them decide, that's a merger or right. That's all. But then, that's wrong, that's not correct. Uh, Supreme Court going into it, PDT Achari shouting from rooftops, no, 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 it has to begin here, not there. Be that as it may, you cannot say we are the, so 50 of you are there, either two-thirds of you decide to merge with another party or 50 of you should be hanging together. Yeah? There is nothing like 40 of you come out and say we are the original party, there is no room for that. All of you are defectors. There is no room for that. Is it? There is room only for merger. There is no room for we are the original party. No, no. What is what, what, what's the status of the other ten? What happened between you two? Have you merged? There is only one way in which the party can uh, you know behave by way of split. Split means quote unquote, not the technical. Two thirds of you merge the party. 
Yes? Two thirds of you merge the party. You can't say 50 are there, 40 come out. We are the original party. In that, but merge! As long as you have the name of Shiv Sena, calling yourself the original political party, you won't be able to exist on your own. You have to merge. Only then you can exist. So without knowing all this, the election commission said, this is the real Shiv Sena. And if you push the election commission hard, they will say, uh, you know, we are not the anti-defection. We don't know what is anti-defection law. Our job is to determine who is the real party. Yes? So what exactly is the legality? And it's one thing to say, okay, you guys are one political party. You two broke up. And she and you, both of you go together to the election commission. Sir, we are the real party. She will say, we are the real party. Then the election commission will say, okay, two of you, you are the real party. That is the election commission. That's okay. But then election commission and the anti-defection law have to be under the same umbrella. So these are the problems, are there? How the Supreme Court will navigate, I have no idea. So now, bring it to the notice of the speaker or the chairman, as the case may be. They will investigate, give you adequate time, call you, talk to you, see if it's an actual case of defection or a concoction. If they are convinced it's an actual case of defection, then they will disqualify you. If you are disqualified, what? You know, please understand this. This is a very, very good question. Very good question. X is disqualified. So what? If X is disqualified, that uh, vacancy is created, by-election will take place, he can contest. See, Rahul Gandhi can't contest for six years. Why? He has been picked up under uh, Section 8 of the RPA 51. So all disqualifications are not the same. Some disqualifications are disqualified. This lady from Calcutta, Bengal, that uh, Mahua Murtra, she could be disqualified tomorrow. She will be expelled. Not disqualified, she will be expelled. But elections are coming in the month of May, she will contest. But if she got picked up, like Rahul Gandhi, defamation, criminal and all that, to begin with, she will go to jail, whenever that is. Whenever that is. After coming from the jail, again six years, she will be disqualified. Like Rahul Gandhi. Rahul Gandhi won't go to jail because that is state. Conviction, not state. The other one is state. Sentence is state. Now, what am I saying? If you, please listen to me carefully. You may be disqualified for any number. Lalu is disqualified. Shautala disqualified. And Mukhtar Ansari disqualified. Somebody else from Kerala disqualified. You know, disqualification for multiple reasons. We are talking of anti-defection law. If you are disqualified for... If you are disqualified for defection, you won't be eligible. Okay. You are disqualified when? You are disqualified on the 1st of January 2023. Immediately, you will lose your seat. You are not a, Then you are a very strong political leader. Chief Minister needs you. Prime Minister needs you. Can he make you Niti Aayog Vice Chairman? No, that's a public post. You are not eligible for any public post till either you come back or till the life of the house. So you are not eligible for any public post till May of next year, new Lok Sabha, or when the by-election takes place in the month of June, within six months, you get re-elected tenure. So you are disqualified for a public post. You are not disqualified to become a member of the parliament. You got that. It's not Rahul Gandhi case. It is disqualification for defection. Uh, so, now, uh, we know anti-defection law. We know everything about anti-defection law now. You know the original anti-defection law, as I told you, had the provision of split and that was creating, uh, you know, this exodus rather than one man splitting, one man going and so, 91st Constitution Amendment Act was made, 2003, split got removed, 
and okay what is the strength of uh, the Lok Sabha 543 what is 15 percent of that 80 roughly a council of ministers of the union uh, government cannot exceed 80 because um, somebody X is thrown out the defector disqualified too influential he'll become a minister yeah how can he become a minister okay I'll become a minister and I'll be uh, sort of a, I'll get re-elected and all that so when you limit the size of the ministry as a proportion of the total membership of the popular house Lok Sabha assembly that again shows that you are not giving a public post you know for reasons other than merit otherwise everybody wants you want to become the minister otherwise I'll leave the Prime Minister has satisfied all of you not because you are competent to be the ministers but because you are holding him to ransom so limit the size of the council of ministers 15% and then you are not eligible for public post once you are disqualified for defection till the life or earlier than that if you get elected. These are three items brought into the constitution by the amendment of the anti-defection law by the 91st amendment act in 2003. You will see the graphic. Now what is the problem with anti-defection law? The problem with anti-defection law is uh, this. Number one you are not allowing you are XYZ party, you have 100 members in Lok Sabha, they have to do exactly what you tell them to do. If they defy your order, they are liable to be called defectors and disqualified. So it gags the member of parliament number one, doesn't let him have any conscience, uh, uh, you know, play in, the, in his role as a member of parliament legislator number two, that is one. Another speaker belongs to a political party, but he is the, he works as a tribunal for defection cases, there is a conflict of interest. One interest is party interest, another is the other one, conflict of interest. Third one, you have not defined what is it, voluntarily giving up the membership of the party, is it resignation from the party, is it joining another party, or is it taking part in the party activities of other parties, what is it that you have not defined? speaker we talked about and the Maharashtra case you know a large number of people or a smaller number declared themselves to be the original party what is it that you have not this thing speaker we talked conscience we talked and uh, there is no time limit also you could add this there is no time limit supreme court is after the speaker of Maharashtra assembly decide decide he is not caring at all they have set a deadline for him, he is not caring at all. I am speaker, you are the judge, so what can you do? So, you know, these are all the lacunae of the anti-defection law. You can start seeing the graphics. Can you explain again why we don't allow the split in one case? Why we, oh, why we don't allow the split? We are nine members in the party. We are all in the Lok Sabha. You wanted to leave because you are not happy. If you went alone, you will be a defector. You will tell her. You will tell her, let's leave. So instead of leaving alone, in which case you will be a defector, you are creating a split. So by banning defection on an individual basis, allowing defections on a split basis, you are creating a mass defection. That's not allowed. By the 91st. Originally it was allowed. In 1985 it was allowed. But I am not forcing anyone. They are going out through conscious. You are not forced. Nobody forced anyone. You say, wo, Even when we are merging. You are telling her, oh, ministry offer kar sata Ministry offer kar. Home minister ban jau. So you are egging others. She is not entirely happy, but she is happy in the party. You are totally dissatisfied. She is partly unhappy. You made them 100% unhappy. It happened. See, in a political party, if one man speaks, three of you. So, you know, you create a group and split and stuff. So, rather than one leaving, it's leading to 
uh, as, you know, more number of people, one third leaving, in which case they escape the stigma, the, the consequence of being defectors. It's, huh? But so, it is uh, the freedom of the ministers now that they are allowed to leave. So why are we hindering that freedom? That can be argued against uh, one man leaving also. Why am I stopping you from leaving? You are, you know, a member of parliament, legislator, in your own right, you can leave. So your freedom and representative ethics have to be balanced. Yeah? But even in case of merger, the, like we settled for something else and now we are merging with other ideas. Huh? So how... Two thirds of you are merging. Merger is something else. You are merging with another party. Merging with another party, two thirds of you, you know, ultimately majority will have to be heard. Two thirds you want to merge with that, that party and our party, we have the same ideology, they have lots more members, let's merge. Shiranji V's Praja Rajam party decided, let's merge with Congress. Yeah? So you could decide if the party, I mean, how can you gag the party? Two thirds of the party want to merge. They should have every right to merge. No? Huh? You don't seem if to be. That is at one person level. You know, in democracy, majority cells. Alone, you. Split is happening at majority level, no? but we are abandoning it because it is happening at majority level. That a part of, a major part of political party. Split got outlawed because it is having perverse consequences. Originally, we thought split be allowed because one third leaving should be respected. But then we realize instead of one leaving, one third are leaving because that will save them from the consequences. So this moral hazard, the perverse consequences had to be prevented only by outlawing the split. That is their logic and I find no problem with that. Merger I find no problem. Alone if you are leaving, it doesn't, you know, a libertarian will say, oh, alone means even one person matters. But then all nations are a balance of you know, multiple objectives. So a little bit of pressure on you, so that there is political stability, representative uh, morality. That's how it's argued. Yeah. Uh, lots of the graphics are there, please. Lots of them. You know why the CJI is not pushing the Speaker of the Assembly of Maharashtra hard? Because he will say, what the hell, I have to, so many people are there and I have to interview each one of them, investigate and all that. If I don't give them adequate time, it will be a violation of the principle of natural justice. So, you know. Yeah. You comfortable with all this? Simple 10th class. This is 10th class. Actually 10th class must be more. Yeah. Before this pen falls, I will surrender it to you. This merger bit, I have a separate graphic for you. And since I'm expecting merger, 50% in prelim, 75% in the main, I have given you all the details. And if you have given you the rules that the speaker and the chairman respectively have formulated, rules, I'm quoting from there. If you quote that, I don't know what's above that. Independent, we have elected you as an independent. You're joining a political party. And it's nominated? Yeah? It's nominated 
you are a nominated person, Tindulkar. Six months you get acquainted. Within that, after six months though, you are stretching it. Yeah. I think you are acquiring so much knowledge, you can advise the speaker. <laughs> this, the merger part, rule 4 and 5, merger. This is straight out of the law. There is no hanky-panky here. Straight out of the law. And in a very simplified form, from the Lok Sabha website. After this, a short little table also will come, no? Yeah. Done? Next. Uh, about our friends, yeah? Okay. This is the next page of the same topic. You know, if you can't quote rules and all that, forget. This concept, if you can present clearly in your own style language, the examiner will thank you. I'm sure he doesn't always. But you would love to know. So if you told him, oh. in the sense that he is not an encyclopedia for God's sake, he's got wisdom, he's got experience, he's got the capacity to judge. He would love to learn from you after all. You have studied for one year, surely you can give him insights. You know, there is no hierarchy here for God's sake. In fact, all that I learnt, I must have learnt only from students. People like you, <laughs> leaving me without sleep. <laughs> you know, when I started teaching long back, I used to get up at 12 in the night. A candidate like these people are there in the class. They'll ask me, you know, Finance Commission is just set up. How can you sleep? We you never used to have so much of information, all the internet, economic times. Those days business line was not there. One good article by some big guy about all this, you know, read, compare the budget. Because in the class, they'll eat you up. <laughs> and they're all in service, yeah? They are all in service. We are all waiting for your signal. <laughs> no, no, there is no hurry. I am just joking. This is the table. Same thing crunched into a table. Now have you become the authority on this and believe me all those big people they won't know this much senior constitutional lawyers also won't know this much that is Diwali sound yeah 
UPA government was there, we would have taken it for a bomb going off. <laughs> uh, next. Concerns, you know. I always had this in my mind. I presented some in the notes. But the Lok Sabha Secretariat, some research officers have put it down. These are the concerns. I must have added one or two. You know, I'm expelled from the party. I'm a legislator. I'm expelled. What's my status? Nobody knows. Anti-defection law doesn't talk about it. You know, the title is concerns. Loopholes merger, we know. Conscience vote is not there, we know. Speaker being a member of the political party, we know. Uh, but the, another thing that I have not mentioned here, there is no time limit for the speaker to decide. That also you mentioned. Wide power to the speaker, etc. Curbing individual conscience, ambiguity, volunteer. What does it mean to voluntarily give out the membership? These are all the concerns. You know, like bullets if you write, I can literally see the question next September. In the working of the anti-defection law in the last about 40 years or whatever, there have uh, emerged certain loopholes and shortcomings. What are they? Just these five if you write, you are, yeah? Yeah? You, okay, okay. The whole world is waiting for you. <laughs> you know, today is November 5. All the books, the new books will be in your hands. We'll, you know, already some must be there and one after one after one. By the 1st of February or 15th of February, you should smash them up. Yeah? Now you got a challenge. Now you got a challenge. These are the books. This is the time. Finish it up. Yeah? And then every day Hindu is coming. See what's important for the prelim. Main we can handle later, you know. Main you believe me, you will find main as if you are writing in this classroom. It will be so approachable. Don't think of main yet. Prelim, prelim. So, what's main? But if main and prelims are merged, for example, CTBT, Russia we do, yeah? Or man and biosphere reserves or cheetah 2.0 their prelim and main there is no separation so apply your common sense can this come in the prelim if your mind tells you yeah it's coming in the prelim become a master of that so give yourself three hours for hindu every day nine hours for the textbooks you will get every day i'm not saying those textbooks are enough please for god's sake those textbooks will give you truckloads of enthusiasm. You will be on steroids. You won't be able to contain yourself. Yeah? All this work, if by the end of Jan, if you can finish the books, fully sparing three hours for the Hindu every day, and all with tremendous amount of enthusiasm, many is in your pocket, believe me. Main is in your pocket. Interview will also be in your pocket. 
just take care of the preliminary and for that I have given you the timetable and now you are in a condition where I can't understand this that is gone yeah ecology environment geography history international international relations yeah everything 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 so I am giving you November December Jan at best if you request me 10th of February 100 days preparation 15 days 20 days revision 20 days revision yeah so you got everything on a platter you know to dance your way to Lavasna believe me yeah please believe me yeah now maybe <laughs> Next, uh, yeah, 91 this is, you know the 91st got introduced as a 97th bill, it got passed and it became 91st act, lot of bills are there, but whatever gets passed becomes act, 127 bills are there, amendment bills, the women thing got done, it's become 106, so some people misunderstand 91st to be 97, but 97 was a bill. 91 was the act. Remember you are the most clearly conceptually situated. No one is, you know, of your class, means intellectual class, exam class. So you be on your own. If you find any professor or anyone, your uncle or your aunt or somebody, you could discuss. Otherwise, no one is ahead of you. Stop leading others also. You see, <laughs> neither are you teacher, nor are you student. There's a cap of 15 percent. Because you may have oh, become a minister, don't defect. So, you know, you may throw sops. That's also. This one, see there is a size ceiling kept, total membership 543, 15% of that is about 80, that is the maximum size of the council of ministers, why? Because you can stop defections on the basis of, or somebody may say, okay I will support you, I will be a defector, I will be disqualified, I will become a minister. You know, unless the size of the ministry is contained, ministership can be used as a sop to attract, uh, to, to neutralize dissent, whatever all that, you figure it out. Somebody wants to leave, I want to leave the party, make me a minister, you know all those things can be contained. Uh, this also done, yeah, word of credit, everything, yeah. 